Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous, Yah is holy, and let Yahweh be magnified. <clears throat> shalom, 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 shalom. Welcome to the New Month Podcast, the Eighth Month Podcast, here on World Gathering of the Children of Yisrael. Gather Yah's saints. I'm Ori Isha Yisrael of the House of Yisrael of the World in Gathering of the Children of Yisrael, bringing you the word of Yah today on this eighth new month of the first year of Yah's Shabbat of years. And we'd like to give all praises and glory and honor unto the mighty Elohim the creator of the heaven, earth, and sea, and all that therein is, by saying hallelujah. And welcome again to our broadcast. It's been a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful seven months that the creator gave us in this time and in this year. And now we are beginning New seasons, we're going into new seasons, and we're going to renew ourselves and refresh ourselves. The Creator is going to renew us and refresh us and give us His love as we are in the eighth month. And of course, we at the house of Yisrael, of the world and gathering of the children of Yisrael, we acknowledge Yah's signs, seasons, days, and years according to the word of Yah, which brings us to our eighth month at this time. And what you'll notice about the eighth month and what you'll notice about Yah's signs, seasons, days, and years is that they will follow a particular order and pattern in which you'll be able to understand the creator's method and how he orders his days. We are in Yah's time. We are in his hands and his alone. So all the other amalgamations and creations and manifestations that people are following after today, they are only of their own imagination. And so what we teach is the word of Yah. We don't just teach the word of Yah. We exercise the word of the Most High. In doing so, we declare what Yah has spoken. And this eighth month is the time that we're declaring today. And why is this such a special time? Well, because it's the first year, and now we're starting the eighth month on the fourth day of the week. What does that mean? That means that we are in a renewed time. The first year of Yah's years starts on the fourth day of the week as it is today. And so you see again this day beginning the eighth month because this is a renewed time. And we're starting a new season. And so you'll see this occur in the Holy Scriptures. First, go to the book of Leviticus, the 25th chapter. In the 25th chapter of Leviticus, the Scriptures will read in verse 1, And Yahweh spake unto Moshe in Mount Sinai, saying, 
Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give you, then you shall keep a Shabbat unto Yahweh. Six years you shall sow your field, and you shall prune your vineyard, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Shabbat of rest, unto the land a Shabbat for Yahweh. You shall neither sow your field nor prune your vineyard. That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest you shall not reap, neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. For it is a year of rest unto Yahweh in the land. A Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you and for your servant and for your maid and for your hired servant and for your stranger that sojourneth with you and for your cattle and for your beasts that are in your land shall all the increase thereof be meat. And you shall number seven Sabbaths of years unto you. Seven times seven years shall you, seven times seven years in the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto you forty and nine years. So the eighth verse is letting us know that we are to adhere to these years in their cycles, which are in cycles of seven. After seven years, you have to mark that as one set of seven years, then another, and then another, and then another, until you do it seven times. And once that is done, you will come to the Day of Atonement in the seventh month on the tenth day and blow the trumpet of Jubilee and you shall proclaim liberty throughout your land or proclaim the Jubilee throughout your land. And so we had to do these things when we had our nation. Yet, today, we've forgotten the statutes, the judgments, and the commandments of the mighty Yah. And because of this, we are following other schedules, other timetables, and other things. But the Creator wants us to come forward and declare his righteousness and his holiness and his judgments. And this is why we're here on the New Month podcast today on the eighth month. And for the eighth month and for this renewed season, the house of Israel, of the world in gathering of the children of Israel, will be engaging in another 30-day movement. And our movement will be according to the word of the Creator. Before I tell you what our movement will be for the next 30 days, let me first also, or let me also show you the book of Isaiah. And in the book of Isaiah, we're going to go to the 51st chapter. And we're going to go here because we're going to read about how the creator is addressing the children of his people. And why do we need to see how the creator addresses the children of his people? Because you servants of the Most High, those of you that declare to be Yah's servants, you, re you desire to magnify the Most High. You desire to spread forth the truth of the Almighty. You desire to speak his words 
and show forth his righteousness, to wake up his people, to do the right thing in the manner of the Almighty. And the Creator wants you to know how you're supposed to approach his people and how you're supposed to conduct yourself in order to be a part of his glorified and sanctified and holy program. What I'm going to show you is how the creator wants to include you in his mission. Yes, the creator has a mission. He didn't just put you on earth for yourself. He has a mission, and you and I have to play out this mission, but it's up to you which role you want to be in this mission. He has a role for everyone. And the new month is a perfect time to get reacquainted with the mission the Most High has for you. And in doing so, you might learn something and hear something you've never heard or learned before. And so let's look at the book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter. And this will also be indicative of our 30-day movement for the house of Israel, of the world in gathering. These movements are all to bring us to how we can gather ourselves together. But here in the book of Isaiah, the 51st chapter, the first verse, it says, Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek Yahweh, look unto the rock whence you were hewn into the hole of the pit whence ye are digged. Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For Yahweh shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of Yah. Joy and gladness shall be found therein. Thanksgiving and the voice of met medley, melody. Hearken unto me, my people, and give ear unto me, O my nation. For a law shall proceed out of them from me, and I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. My righteousness is near. My salvation is gone forth, and my arm shall judge the people. The isles shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. Lift up your eyes unto the heavens, and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. And they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever. And my righteousness shall be abolished, shall, be, shall not be abolished. Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. 
Fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their revilings. For the moth shall eat them up like a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. What is the creator saying in these eight verses of Isaiah the 51st chapter? What does he want us to know? And how does this deal with how we approach the creator's people? In Isaiah the 51st chapter, in the first verse, the creator told you to hearken. But who did he tell to hearken? Ye that follow after righteousness and ye that seek Yahweh. In the fourth verse, he said, hearken. But who did he say hearken? My people. And give ear my nation. In the seventh verse, he said, hearken. Ye that know righteousness, the people whose heart is my law. If you didn't realize, the creator addressed six groups of people, six sides, six personalities, six different types. And what are the six? In the first verse, he said to those that follow after righteousness, you that seek Yahweh, so you might follow the right thing. You might seek the most high. Well, if you those people, then hearken unto Yah. In the fourth verse, he said to my people, he said to my nation, if you are the nation of the Most High, if you claim to be the people of the Creator, then wait for His law. In the seventh verse, He said to those that know righteousness, in whose heart is His law. He told you, don't even be afraid of men or their reproach. Don't even fret over the oppressor. How do we address the Almighty's people? We address the Almighty's people the way he addressed them. He wants all of us to hear him. That's why he's saying this in the 51st chapter. 51 is the eighth order of two. It's the eighth degree of two. So he is coming to us in a manner that is for your renewal. And so you can renew your adherence to the creator. Renew your obedience to the most high. And you do that the way he wanted you to do that from the beginning, which is hearken unto him. So if you follow righteousness, if you seek Yahweh, he gave you something to follow and look after. That's why in the second verse, he tells you to look unto Abraham. 
if you follow righteousness, then look at the example of righteousness. Abraham. Look at Sarah. An example of righteousness. And if you seek Yahweh, look unto them. Because these people, Abraham and Sarah, they are your best examples for righteousness and following the creator. If you are of Yah's people, you're not just following, you're not just seeking, but you know I'm the people. I'm of his nation. And is there a difference between people and a nation? Yes. Because you say you're the people, but are you part of the nation? You're the people because that's your heritage. But you're the nation because you work for it. You're dedicated to it. You identify to be this kingdom of priests. And that means you are a contributor to the moving forward of your nation. You're a contributor of the work that the nation produces. You're not just born in it. You are a part of it. You are invested and your hand is involved in its representation. But if you are of the people, if you are the nation, then you already know the law will proceed from the Almighty. And his judgment will be a rest, will rest for a light of the people. If you're not exercising the judgment of the Most High, then you're really not being part of the people because the judgment is what the Almighty is putting out to be your light. The judgment of the Most High is the light to the people. The nation should be exercising the judgment of Yah. And we have to be renewed in this. That means if you need to get a refresher, on how to exercise Yah's judgment, then let's go ahead. Let's, let's learn about it. Go and run it back. Run back the teachings. What were the examples set forward? The law is for the people. And in the seventh verse, he said, hearken unto me. You, every group has to hearken. But it, depending on who you are, he's letting you know what to hearken to. So for the third group, and notice it's three different groups in these eight verses, but he's doubled them. And in this third group, he said, Hearken unto me, ye that know righteousness. The people in whose heart is my law. If this is who you are, 
then stop being afraid of the reproach of men. And don't be afraid of their revilings. Don't be afraid to stand strong for the most high. Don't be afraid of what man will say and do. Just if you know him, if you know the most high, you know this law. Your heart is filled with this law. Then why are you not being bold as a lion in declaring the work of Yah? And why does he want us to know this? He wants us to know this because as he concluded each address, like in verse 3, as he concluded each address, so he wants you to know this. He wants you to hearken to him, ye that follow righteousness and that seek Yahweh. He wants you to know this because in verse 3 he says, I'm going to comfort Zion. I'm going to comfort all her waste places. I'm going to make the wilderness like a garden of Yah. There's going to be gladness and joy and thanksgiving in the voice of melody. <laughs> Meaning, you want to be a part of Yah's salvation. You got to follow righteousness. You got to seek Yahweh and if you want to make it, if you want to be a part of this renewed Eden, a part of the renewed garden, if you want a joy in being gladness and have thanksgiving and sing with the voice of melody, then you need to look at Abraham and Sarah. Follow after that and you're going to make it. This is what he wants you to understand. If you the people, if you his nation, in verse 6 he said, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. Understand that them heavens, they'll vanish away. The earth it will become old like a garment and everyone that lives in it will die in like manner. Yet, there is no end to his righteousness. There is no end to his salvation. And if he saves you, he saves you from the dying earth. He'll save you from the dying heavens and you'll be renewed. You'll be in the new heavens and the new earth. But if you want to be where he's taking you, then this law proceeds from him. His judgment is the light. You got to hear him on this and you got to obey him if you want to be in this sanctified nation. So the Almighty he wants us to be a part of the salvation. He wants us to be the workers of righteousness. 
He doesn't want you to take this season that you're coming into, laying down. Who it was a long, hot, hard summer. Let me rest in my house and hibernate. No. This is where you renew your strength. And he's reminding us how to do it. By first, Shema, hearken to him. Hear him and put your mind on this law. And he's letting you know he has salvation stored for you and his righteousness is near to come. And you can be a part. He's letting us know this in the 51st chapter, the eighth order of two. So you can be not just renewed, so you can be established. So you can be established and mounted for prosperity. The creator wants you to understand that you go through these things here so you can be set apart for salvation. That's what he's attempting to prepare you for. Salvation. Salvation is not an imaginary, idealistic hypothesis. It's not some theoretical dream salvation is real and what you're not understanding is salvation is already in your grasp what we what what we have lost the functioning mind to display is that we are salvation but you don't remember Therefore, you're not understanding that you already are salvation. How are you salvation? Well, look in Isaiah, the 44th chapter. As a matter of fact, the 49th chapter is really where we need to go. Isaiah 49 and verse Seven, no, verse six. Isaiah 49, verse six says, and he said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Yaakov. And to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles that you may as be my salvation unto the end of the earth. We are salvation. The children of the Almighty is salvation. How, Moray, when we need to be saved? Yes, you may feel like you need to be saved, but you already are. The fact that you exist is a 
fact that you are saved. How do you know that? How can I prove that you are saved? It's in the book of Exodus. In Exodus, the 19th chapter, in verse 1 it says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness and there Yisrael camped before the mount. And Moshe went up to Elohim and Yahweh called unto him out of the mountain saying, thus saith, thus shall you say to the house of Yaakov, and tell the children of Israel, ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if I if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. He said, you saw what I did to the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. The Almighty saved the children of Israel. In doing such, he presented to us his covenant, his law. And in doing such, established us his kingdom of priest, his holy nation, which all nations of the earth will be blessed by us, all people. And if people want salvation, they must come to us. Why else would it say this in the book of Zechariah? The eighth chapter. And it says in Zechariah, the eighth chapter, verse 21. And the inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before Yahweh and to seek Yah of hosts. I will go also. Yea, many people and strong nations shall come to see Yah of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before Yahweh. Thus saith Yah of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is of Yehuda, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard Elohim is with you. What does it say in Isaiah? the second chapter, the first verse, the word of Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Yehuda and Yerushalom, and it shall come to pass in the last days 
that the mountain of Yah's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yah, to the house of the Elohim of Yaakov, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yah from Yerushalayim. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not rise up against nation and shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Yaakov, come ye, let us walk in the light of Yah. The nations will be coming forth to us because we are Yahweh's salvation. And in this eighth month, the Almighty is sending out his message to you to be renewed in the understanding of his law. This is what should be in your mind and on your tongue and in your hands. Yah's law. But don't just talk about it. We gonna work it. We're gonna work this thing. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna do it by performing the words. We're gonna do it by taking those words and plugging them into our hands and plugging them into our feet and plugging them into our heart and we're going to make things happen. So what are the things we're going to make happen in this eighth month? We're going to renew Israel. And how are you going to do that? You're going to do it by building his house. Oh, yes, this may seem like a big task, but it's only big if you're by yourself. Therefore, for this eighth month, 30-day movement, the first thing we got to do is return to the creator. And you do that exactly the way that he said do it. If you go to the book of Malachi, in Malachi, the third chapter, in Malachi, the third chapter, verse 7, it says, even from the days of your fathers, you're gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith Yahweh of hosts. But ye said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob Elohim? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Improve me now herewith, saith Yah of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. 
and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall you cast the neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time of the field, saith Yah. All nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith Yahweh of hosts. So we're going to send up not just our tithes, but also our offerings. And what we're going to do with the tithes and offerings in this eight month for 30 days, we're going to judge the fatherless and the widow and the stranger. He's saying, well, isn't that what we do? Yes, that's what we do, but we're going to do it in this manner. I'm challenging you to give your tithe as you should, but also your offering. And when the house of Israel, the world in gathering, receives the tithe and offering, we're going to directly deliver it to a widow or fatherless, especially, or stranger. We're not going to deliver, we're not just going to say we're delivering it, meaning we're going to take that money, food, or resourceful items, and we're going to go and give it right to them. And we want to make sure it's a big blessing. We want to make sure it's a big blessing. But we're not just doing it to any. We're going to give it to a widow in Israel or widows. We're going to give it to fatherless in Israel or multiple of them. That's just depending on how much meat you want to be in Yah's house. That's, that's the point. Bless Yisrael and you shall be blessed. And we're going to show that we are salvation. There's fatherless in Israel today that don't have what they need. And we're going to give it to them. And there's widows that don't have what they need, and we're going to give it to them. We're going to make sure of it. And this is going to build Yah's house because we're going to renew ourselves in this work because we're going to do this every month. We're going to start building up the meat in Yah's house that every month we have salvation in our hands. We're going to become an established place where the widows, the fatherless, and the stranger can come to and receive salvation. And how do you receive salvation? You receive it because not only do you get the resources you need, but you get the education you need. You get the support you need. And this helps you exercise self-determination. We cannot be a people if we cannot exercise self-determination. If we keep on allowing our oppressors make the decisions for us, and if we keep on making our decisions based on what our oppressors can give us, we're not exercising self-determination. So we're going to start building to exercise self-determination 
because we are Yahweh's salvation. And we're going to show every place that Yah has put us in that we are what he said we are. You may be a follower and a seeker, and we're going to show you Abraham and Sarah. If you want to get people to wake up, you got to show them Abraham and Sarah. If you want to get people to be a nation, we got to show them his judgments. And if you know the Most High and his laws in your heart, then stand up and be bold. Be a not afraid, have no fear of the reproach of men and perform this law. So we're going to start out this eighth month calling on the house of Israel, the world in gathering. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid and don't be timid about making sure that tenth is separated and your offerings are given. We're going to make sure you're going to see, oh, look at that widow or those widows, unless they don't want to be uh, acknowledged. But I'm still going to report what we did. I can understand people don't want to have, don't want their names mentioned. And that's understandable. If they don't want their names mentioned, if they don't want their pictures shown, fine. But I want us to be able to record that we lifted up the widows and the fatherless, which means, yes, we're going to have to go and find them. You might know some. Good. If you know them, then email us at just message us through the app and let us know. We, you know where the widow of Israel, specifically the Hebrews, fatherless widows. That's who we're targeting with our tithing offering in the eighth month. And when the conclusion of the eighth month is finished, we're going to take what we collected and we're going to satisfy the widow and the fatherless. They may not want the cash. They may say, hey, buy me a couch. Okay, we buy you a couch. We're going to go do this thing. We're going to help them. We're going to perform the word of the Most High, and we're going to show you we're performing the word of the Most High. So you know that if you perform it, you're going to be blessed because we're building Yah's house. And in doing so, we have to be the blessing he told us to be. And that's what we're going to show, that we did this, and then we're going to testify to the blessings that came from doing it. We're, we're going to continue. We're just going to show and prove because this is how we raise up our people. And we're not doing it in, in a boastful way, and we're not going to do it in a braggadocious way, and we're not going to do it in an arrogant way. How we're going to do it is the way the creator told us to. We're going to declare his righteousness and we're going to declare his glory. And you'll see if you not only contribute to this thing, you'll see it in your 
own life and you'll see it in your congregation. You'll see it in your nation. And it's not going to be something that will lag behind either. You're going to do it. And then you're going to be blessed. And however the Most High blesses you is going to be your blessing. He's going to bless you according to your need. We're going to prove that Yah is real. We're not just going to roll around in Lamborghinis and buy big houses. We're going to show that this is a nation of a holy nation, a kingdom of priests. We are Yah's people, and we are Yahweh's salvation. And you're going to see it because there are people in this earth that want to serve Yahweh, and that's who Yahweh wants. And that's who we're trying to perform the work for, the Most High. And this is what our eighth month movement will be about. So if you're a willing servant of the Most High and you want to be a part of the work of the Creator, you already know what to do. And this is not just I'm not raising, this is not a fundraiser. This is a, this is doing work. We're just doing work. It doesn't matter how much or how little uh, money we raise in tithes and offerings. All of it, whether it's little or whether it's a lot, we're going to do the work. Bottom line. Bottom line. Let's see how Yahweh will bless us and put our mind to doing this work. We're going to do some work for the Most High. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty Yah. Yah is righteous. Yah is holy. And let Yahweh be magnified. So, if you support the house of Israel, the world, and gathering of the children of Israel, please download our mobile app, which you'll find on our website, gatheryahsaints.org. Download our mobile app, and on our mobile app, you can access everything we're doing, our classes, music that we have, uh, teachings, uh, our calendar, you can keep up with the dates. Everything that we're doing, you'll find right there on our mobile app. You can also send in your tithes and offerings through the mobile app and our website. Go to our YouTube pages or Facebook pages as well, and it'll direct you to our website and our mobile app and every event that we have coming or have done. And so we will publicize more about our movement for this month, and we hope that you will be a part of it. There's a lot of craziness going on in the earth, but the Most High wants you to keep your mind focused on him. And as one of his servants, it is my job, my obligation that I perform with pleasure to present to you Yah's inspiration. And we will continue to do so. Whether you send tithes and offerings to our congregation or to Cincinnati or Mississippi or Florida or wherever, let's do some work, bottom line. I don't know if any other congregation is going to do the work the way I'm proposing. That doesn't mean they're not, but I'm proposing a manner in which we do it to provide evidence of the work. You're not just going to read about it. You're going to see it. 
You're going to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of it. So you don't have to say, it's y'all's doing. No, say, we, we are doing. We're doing. What are we going to do? Praise the mighty Yah. Well, until next time, this Shabbat day coming, the Holy Shabbat podcast, and all the great festivities that take place on the Holy Shabbat day. Until then, Yahweh loves you very much, and so do I. And may Yahweh bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance unto you and grant you peace. Giving all praises to the mighty Yah, the creator of the heaven, earth, and sea, and all that therein is. Hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, shalom. is miraculously beautiful How amazing is your word You crown the humble You bring low your bomb in a bow Hallelujah 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 You gave us your Shabbat on the 8th and the 22nd day you gave us light, you showed us your way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know creation is miraculously beautiful. How amazing is your word. You crown the humble. You bring all the love in a bowl. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You gave us your word in the third month. You spoke to us ten words. And we heard your voice on your shalishi. You're the almighty, grand peace and decree liberty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, all of Israel worship Yah, all oh, King, all the world worship Yah, our Elohim. Make the sun, he made the moon, he made the stars and the flowers to bloom. Give glory to Yah, sing praises to his name.